Hello, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Goldstein, a practicing physician at Rochester General Hospital. I specialize in the field of gastroenterology and today I would like to discuss the topic of colonoscopies. So the question is what is a colonoscopy? A colonoscopy is a surgical procedure which we perform here at Rochester General Hospital and we perform multiple thousands of colonoscopies annually here at the hospital which is a procedure in order to try to screen patients for any pathology or any abnormalities that we might find in the colon. So the next question is who should consider having a colonoscopy? It could be anybody from their teenage years all the way up until their 90s. So I think in the general sense symptoms would then dictate a diagnostic examination. That's what we call the diagnostic approach. Then we look at a screening approach. Now with the screening, anyone over 50, including those that reach age 50 and over, should have a screening colonoscopy based on the American Cancer Society guidelines. That's for health maintenance. The new guidelines according to our American College of Gastroenterology also subcategorize and state that African Americans should start at age 45 with screening colonoscopies because they're at higher risk than the general population. Then we look at other populations that are at risk. One that may have a family history of colon cancer in one's family or even colonic polyps which are little growths that could lead to colon cancer that occur in the colon. This population we generally use the rule that colonoscopy is performed 10 years prior to the index case which means if dad had colon polyps or colon cancer at age 45 then the children would have their colonoscopy at age 35. So they would go outside the normal screening guidelines if there's a positive family history for colon cancer or colonic polyps. What should patients expect prior to the colonoscopy, during the colonoscopy, and then following the colonoscopy? Prior to the colonoscopy, and the major limiting factor for us as gastroenterologists is really the preparation. It's important for the patients to understand clearly that they need to cleanse the colon, and there's various preparations that are on the market. We try to use the most user-friendly and safest preparation for our patients, but the goal is to cleanse the colon well so that we get good visualization of any lesions or any abnormalities that we may find in the colon. During the procedure, the patient is sedated. They should expect to be in a semi-conscious state. We generally don't use general anesthesia for the procedure. So patients are in kind of a state of limbo whereby they're very relaxed. We, during the colonoscopy between the nurses and myself, make sure that we ask the patient, are they comfortable? Uh, we want to ensure that they're comfortable during the procedure and if for some reason they're not, we administer more medication to make them comfortable. Now during the procedure we have to insufflate with air, which is a technical term that basically we inflate the colon with not just air, but we're using carbon dioxide here now at Rochester General, one of the only institutions that's using carbon dioxide. Why? Because it allows for rapid diffusion of the gas once we're done with the procedure eliminating post-procedure pain from distension. Most of the time patients are fine post-procedure. There's always risks associated with colonoscopy. Whenever one takes a polyp out there's a risk of perforation which is very rare. One should not preoccupy themselves with this but just be informed that it is a potential risk. There's also risks for bleeding. When any, whenever a polyp is removed there's always a risk for bleeding. We try to minimize that risk by making sure that patients don't take any form of a non-steroidal or a blood thinning agent that may affect any type of coagulation process such as clotting. So we tell them to avoid aspirin and Motrin and Advil and Aleve, etc. Any non-steroidal agent at least five to seven days prior to the procedure so that if a polyp is found and we remove it, their risk of bleeding is, is minimal. What are the risks if one chooses not to have a recommended colonoscopy? A lot of patients say, I feel great, I haven't had a colonoscopy ever, I don't need one. That's totally wrong. I think it's important for one to follow the screening guidelines, but if they opt not to, they take their life in their own hands. 
with regard to the fact that if we are not able to identify the polyp and remove it or find some abnormality and it, it's too late, then, then there's nothing more we can do at certain points. So if there is a cancer that's present or if a polyp grows into a cancer and this has all occurred because they've chosen themselves not to have the procedure, that's their own decision. It is important to note that colon cancer is both treatable and in some cases curable if detected in its early stages. This single fact should be the main reason why one schedules a colonoscopy. Thank you for watching.